Shane and Belda. They can int- they are family, and they they have been in Romania. And I think they'll they'll introduce themselves, introduce their work. Welcome. Mulțumim. What follows is not scripted. Because I warned with, I know I wanted to put a bit of a message in today about missions. Because sadly, I think the churches in the West are losing their hearts for mission. They're more concerned about their own survival. Well, a church that has a mission mindset and a mission view will never have to worry about its survival because it is in the hands of God. An ascending church is a growing church, wherever that may be. And as I started to think today, I started to think, well, I could do the Great Commission. I mean, that's very, everybody knows that. And there was different passages I looked at. But then I discovered something today. I know John, our Old Testament scholar, is not with us here today. But does anybody know what this Sunday is? Bev does, because I whispered in her ear. (laughs) Pentecost, Mm -hmm. yes. And what's interesting, and I find mind-boggling, Pentecost is the day of an event in Christianity that we can mark. It is a day we know when happened. Christmas was set up under something else. Easter went by something else. But we know when Pentecost is. We know every year when Pentecost is. And Pentecost was the birth of the church. Pentecost was the day that the Spirit came and dwelt among his people. And as I thought of that, I started looking at the book of Revelation. And I would like to read a scene from the book of Revelation. Now, Revelation can be a book that divides. It can be a book that everybody has their own view on. But I see Revelation as the heavenly view of the church. Revelation is the spiritual side of what is happening in the church throughout its history. And so we have it where seven churches, letters are sent. Some churches are doing great. Some churches are struggling under heavy persecution. Some churches are slipping. Some churches are just rotten. But in all of them, hope is held out. And so when I think of the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came upon those men and women in Jerusalem, when people were gathered from all ends of the Roman Empire to celebrate, languages were spoken. It was something that was so amazing. Some people thought they're drunk. Some people thought they're crazy. But it was the spirit breaking onto the scene. And so, when we turn to the seventh chapter of Revelation, we have a heavenly view. We have a view from the throne of God. And John is caught up in this. 
And it says, after this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. I will start a teaching revelation in a Bible study in church in Sigmandru. And we didn't get that far yet, God willing, in the fall we will. But I had been looking ahead and looking. And then when we would go to worship, we would go to worship in the languages we would hear. It was a mixed community, so we heard Romanian, we heard Magyar, Hungarian, we heard Thiganeshte, Gypsy, and of course, with us being there, we heard English. And it brought me to this, and it brought me to this view of God looking down on this little congregation, singing praise, singing praise and bowing in worship. And I look at this church, South Africa, Nigeria, Uruguay, Charlottetown, <laughs> you know, um, that we have so many, Mexico, Mexico Joe, <laughs> I'm trying to think, thank you. And um, you know, why do we go on missions? Why does the church have missions? Because God doesn't want all the same people standing before his throne. He wants nations. He wants all languages. He wants all tribes. That's why we go. And that's why the church needs to encourage people to go. We need to raise up generations to send. We need to learn as a church body to equip, to have a heavenly view of what God wants for his church. Because when you have the heavenly view, borders mean nothing. Neighborhoods mean nothing. Nations mean everything. That's why Jesus died for every nation on earth. And that is why I've always had a heart for mission. And I'm glad I married a wife <laughs> that had a heart for mission. Because it's difficult. It's difficult leaving the ones we love. You know, some people say, oh, how was your trip? And I understand, like, it's, it's, I don't take offense at it, but I often want to think, we didn't go to Pamir Island. We went halfway around the world to give our life to serving the downtrodden, 
We went to show them the love of Jesus. And that that's okay, you know, it is okay. Because we know in our hearts why we're there. We're there to bring glory to Jesus Christ. And everybody has a different calling. Some people's calling is to work with professionals. Some people's calling is to work in the school system and show Jesus Christ. Some people's calling is to work with seniors to show Jesus Christ. But God has called us, or at least we believe that, and that's where our heart is, to work with those who are despised and have nothing. They're not just poor, they're hated. And even more step further, when these Roma, these gypsies, come to Christ, living in an orthodox country, then they are even more trouble. If you want to see a nightmare, try to have a gypsy buried. Unless they have land, the orthodox church is not going to let them on it. Some people have gone unburied for days because they could not find land for them. And so it's things like that that we take for granted that they don't. And I know there are worse places in Romania. There are places that in the world that probably make Romania look like a three-star hotel. But because I, 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 I have a friend in the Ivory Coast, John Claude, who we know, knew in the 90s, and I sent him pictures of a house we had, we had built. And, you know, it was... It was, anyways. Um, and he responded back is, oh, what a beautiful house. I'd love to have something like that. So perspective is everything. But mind you, the house that we were building was much better than the house that we were moving the people from. Mm -hmm. um, so it's that passage especially, that worship before the throne of God, that really gives me a heart for missions. A heart to be there. I, I, I feel lost here. I do. I feel lost here. And that's not saying I, God uses you anywhere, but it just, I feel that that's where God wants us, and God willing, we will be back in September. Um, this year, and then I'll let Velda take over, this year was probably our busiest that we've ever been. And, it, I, and of course it was cut short and it was good that it was that we were home in time for what needed to be home for. But I'll tell you, we crawled into bed exhausted. We did everything. <laughs> and God blessed us more and more and more and more and opened up so many doors. And actually the places we are mainly working in now are places we never worked before. And it's exciting, and it's very exciting. So I just want Velda to kind of do some in your heart, honey, in your heart. <laughs> Thank you. Um, sorry. <laughs> it's an emotional day. I do love Romania, the people. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, this year, I feel our time there, I built closer, I've been closer. Got some closer relationships with our, the teams that we work with, and I thought I was supported before. <laughs> Every other year, that I thought we had great support, and this year was amazing. Um, leave you and Elena, a couple that do this wonderful program, and uh, they asked me. They said, "Well, to come work with us." Um, whatever, whatever days you can use, we can, we can use you any day. And, um, 
So anyways, I chose to go with them on Tuesdays and we do a kids program, we do an after school program. And uh, it is to see these children that are not getting taught in school well and to be able to give them uh, help with their, with their education, but also just to love on them because they cling to you for it. You know, so um, he's losing a lot of the, as they get 13, 14, they get drawn out to money. Girls end up pregnant. They, you know, like it just, boys want to go off and uh, make money and be a nuisance, you know. Um, but it's what they know, it's what their parents did, it's what everybody in their village does, you know. So to be able to get a hold of these young people and to show them something else that is a possibility in their, sorry John, possibility in their lives um, really is a, a blessing to me, you know. Thank God every day. Leave you sends photos of children that are doing really well. He started a youth group in the city that we live in, and the children from this group have asked. Um, he told them about it, said, if you want to come, contact me. He had 13 youth contact him to come to youth group, you know? So it's amazing, they do have a thirst also and, um, and know that they're gonna receive love there, right? So, yeah. I got to join a widow's group with, with the widows. <laughs> I got to be involved with a widow's group. <laughs> Maybe that's I don't better. Know. She's a prophetess. <laughs> <laughs> and they are lovely. Like Shane said, they're orthodox, orthodox. though. And for them to get permission from their priest to be able to come to this program um, was a big compliment to the program because normally they would not be uh, allowed to go to a, um, you know, like a, Pokehitsa Protestant, Protestant um, program, you know, just because what are they going to teach them, right? And so, uh, so yeah, to be a part of that it was a real blessing also. And then all the being able to go out, there was a lot of hungry people this year because of uh, COVID, people not being, they're not allowed out on, they weren't allowed out on the streets to be able to beg or even go out and find work if they, um, if they didn't have a letter for a time, if they didn't have a letter, they couldn't leave their home to say where they're going. And uh, so you can't go out there and hope to find work that day if you don't have a letter, right? And you don't, so anyway, so there was a lot of hungry people. So uh, our good friend, he had, uh, <laughs> Every Friday, at least, if not a couple times a week, we would go out to the villages and take these food packets to people. They were hungry and thankful. You know, David's very good at always bringing the gospel with always his. Always a gospel message with it. Always, a, you know, like he's got to give the gospel. It's like food's not the most important part. It's the gospel. You got to give them the gospel, and. Uh, some weeks he'd go, you know, like on Friday we'd uh, pick up the groceries, bag them up, take them to the village, and we'd say, okay, you know, like, got a plan for next week, David? And he's like, nope, I don't have any money left. And Monday morning he'd call and he goes, hey, money just arrived. <laughs> We're going to go do this, <laughs> you know? So he is a man that re relies on the trust that God's going to provide. He doesn't ask for money. Never. You know, 
He doesn't, and people have sent him money from all over the world, you know, to be able to get him out there for building houses. People's houses are falling down. David's like, okay, we at least got to get a roof on that house, but we don't have any money for that. And then somebody will send him a message and say, hey, David, we've got some money. We want to put it towards housing. And it's like, praise God, there we are. We're going to put a roof on that house, you know. And, yeah, it's just, amazing. it's amazing to watch God work there. And um, like Shane said, you know, like we love being home, mm. being with family, and familiar is really nice also. And so is the ease of conversation. Mm. <laughs> and so that's nice also. But man, the love and the Well, and it just feels like that's where you belong, you know. That's where we belong, and uh, and we thank God that He has put us there. Yeah, and I want—I just want to clarify a little bit of Orthodox too. Two of our best friends are Orthodox, but they are also the most evangelistic Orthodox people I've ever met. And she runs a center that works with the Roma people. So, you know, it's not right across the board. And there are even some priests that are getting a little more open. But generally, no, we're not, we're not well liked by the Orthodox. But that's okay. We're not there to be liked. We're there to love. And, um, and you know, and this year, too, I did something I never did before. I taught at a uh, Bible college that actually was established by a Canadian couple from Alberta. He was a trucker for many years, owned a trucking company, and they've been in Romania 25 years. They're on their third family. He's in a wheelchair, she can barely walk, and they're running this school center and are raising their third family. They had a Canadian family, then they raised a Romanian family, and now they're raising another Romanian family that aged from 19 to 11. So they're, uh, they're an incredible couple. And um, so that he had been, last time he, I was supposed to go last year, of course I didn't go last year to Romania, but so I was able to teach a course on the Gospel of John. Um, there are intense courses that last two weeks. You do a week and then another week of something else and then they come back a few times through the year. So these are men that have to leave their families and, uh, and that, so it's raising up young Roma men to be church leaders. So that was, that was good, that was, that was good. Um, and of course, knowing most of them too, that was a, a bonus too. So yeah, we're, we're looking forward to getting back in September. Um, the COVID, you know, we didn't really talk about it over there. You had to wear a mask everywhere, but usually when you were in the villages, you didn't because they didn't, and you didn't want that separation. And this year actually was the year, first year ever, that I never got sick once. Now, I do believe I may have had COVID in October because I'm still not got my sense of smell back, but other than that, I've had no effects. And, and being in a gypsy village, not having a sense of smell, that's a blessing from God many times. So, um, and uh, The first house that helped David uh, build, we were right beside the manure garbage pile. You know, like, I mean, Years you ago. stepped in it, you know, to be able to do one side of the house. Yeah. So, yeah, so it was yeah. good for him. <laughs> I was <laughs> witness to it all. Yeah, yeah so, um, you know, there's so much more doing. We're working on discipleship. That's our big drive now. Discipleship for three years. Hordu was after me, come to Sigmandru, come to Sigmandru, no Hordu, I will support you where I can, but I can't come to Sigmandru. Most of our time this time was spent in Sigmandru, and it's where most of our discipleship was happening. And we didn't know what we were missing. Sigmandru is amazing. This is a new church. Just the other day, there was 20 to 30 baptisms. Um, our opening day we had it was snowing out and we were baptizing 25 in a bathtub outdoors. so outdoors, outdoors. <laughs> um, so uh yeah it's um 
It's amazing to see these people in Bible studies, different faces all the time, but you start with around 40 people just coming into this little area. Um, and they just grow, and there's just that hunger for God's word. I mean, there, there are losses. There are people that just can't. They come from different backgrounds. They come from um, either a legalistic church background or they come from no church background, and, and, and they go. And I mean, that's just, that's just Christianity. That happened to Jesus. Um, and that's okay. That's at these, okay. At these Bible studies, we have range from I don't know, 70 to three. You know, like if parents can't get the babysitter, they bring their children, yeah. you know. Um, and I, I told the elders this when we, we met with them the other night, um, the surrealness somehow and the heartbreak. The day we were <laughs> on, when we decided to come home, the Valda felt we needed to get home, was on a Wednesday in Sigmandru, so which is like a, usually a 14, 15 hour day for us. Um, but in that time, I managed to get us a flight for Saturday morning. And we still had all our, we had some packing done, but not a lot. And we had all this stuff to do. And then Friday morning, we were going to one of the worst gypsy villages in our area that there is. It's improving, but it's one of the worst, called Albesht, to do food. And it is a circus. It is, you make, take the wrong turn, you spend half hour trying to figure your way back out to try to get out. And then you're surrounded by dogs that will just tear you apart. And, and you're into mud up to your, past your ankles. And, but I was going with, we had margarine. I've seen more margarine last year than uh, <laughs> Superstore sold in six months. Um, it was donated, and we were giving, so we're giving out cases of margarine and bags of food. And I was way up on the hill, and I don't know, there was a couple other people, but they went the other way. So I was up on this hill, and there was a young girl sitting down with two or three little ones. I'd say she was about between 18 and 20, and I knew she was a prostitute. And I went up to her, and they're just mud, mud, mud. And I said to her, I said, I said, uh, Pentratine for you, you know, the margarina and, uh, and uh, food. And, and, that, and I said, can I pray for you? And she kind of looked at me. I said, Jesus, you beste, Jesus loves you. And that was probably the first time that the word love was ever said to that girl. And she just smiled, the most beautiful smile. She goes, yes. And so I'm in on my knees in the mud, holding her hand and praying. And the kids are gathering around, people are gathering around. And then 20 hours later, I'm sitting in a hotel in Montreal <laughs> in a clean sheet and I'm thinking, how surreal is that? And then I think, okay, God, you've just shown me more why we need to be there. Because these people do not experience love of any type, of any type. Husbands don't usually love their wives. We have good Christian men in the monks of Roma who are setting an example mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. But husbands don't usually love their wives. In fact, many of them are beaten or murdered. Sent out to be prostitutes. Sent out to be prostitutes. The children are sent out to be prostitutes boys and girls from any age. Um, and it's just a sense, an aura of evil as you walk in. But as soon as you start talking to Jesus to them, not in all, but in many, their faces change. There's that gleam of hope. They might not accept him then, but then that's why you keep going. And you keep going and you make disciples. And going back to Sigbandru, there is no problem, even though the restrictions were 50, for there to be 150 people there. Um, and, uh, and that was just it. It's just the hunger. They want to be there. And they'll have two services so that they are going, 
only 50 come for the first and 50 for the last. But the 50 that came for the first service for also the want to be at the last <laughs> service also. So they might have been there at the first one, but they are not going to miss out on the second message also. And each service so. is at least three hours long. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. you know, there's a great work going on there, not just through us. Um, we're just servants. I don't like, I don't like the word missionary. And one reason I don't like the word missionary is because it's not in the Bible. So we just consider ourselves servants and we are opened up to whatever God will allow us to do there. We sometimes have to struggle to say no because you can, there's so much stuff to do you, you can't, and you can't. So we've gotten tougher and you have to be tough. I've gotten tougher. <laughs> Yeah, I've gotten tougher. Um, but you have to be. You have to be yeah. discerning. And so it's good to be there, and I really can't wait to get back. And I um, just pray for us that doors are open. Actually, this year was our easiest entry into Romania. We had a harder time leaving Canada and getting out of Canada. Romania, we got there. They seen our Canadian passports, and they said, oh, they had all the line up of doctors and medical things. Oh, you fellas go right to border control. Showed her thing, the fellow said, because our residence card said run out, because we didn't go last year and we didn't get them renewed. And he said, well, how long are you here for? And I said, well, if we get a residence card, we're here for 90, oh, if we don't get a residence card, we're here for 90 days. And if we do, we're here for up to two years. And they said, okay, great. You know, so, um, so that was a real blessing. But like I say, Montreal was a nightmare both ways. And... Uh, I guess the Canadian government just didn't like us. And we've also discovered another thing, too. We are no longer Canadian residents. We are Canadian citizens, but we are not residents. And so I actually got some, we actually got something I never thought we'd see. We got a stamp in our passport from Canada. <laughs> no. um, Shane had touched on a little bit about us doing anything, and um, that is what um, our friends the people that we work with, David, his wife, and um, leave you, that they all say, it's like we're so thankful to have people here that are just willing to work alongside us. You know, a lot of people go on a mission and or go out there, I mean, they come with their own mindset of what they want to get accomplished, and these men are going, but we've been here. We just need some help. We need people to help us. Like, they would love it. Like, you can all come because they would love to have that help just for one day, one day a week. Just, that's what Olivia said, one day. If you can give me one day of your, of your week, Velda, we would appreciate the extra help. And so, I mean, and everywhere is all the Veritas, you know, like that was Petra. That was the first place we went and they opened their arms to us. And they still at their, want Shane there for devotions. Um, he goes once a month, but they would love to have him there. <laughs> I think almost all the time. Um, so yeah, to, you know, they just appreciate that we're there to serve. You know, we're not, we're not there to set our own foot, you know, like make our own pathway. We're there to do what they need help with. And... Um, yeah, they're, and they're, the, they're people that live there and know what needs to be done. So for us to just go and help alongside them, thank you, God, you know, because, yeah, he's made us that way. <laughs> so. so we thank you mm -hmm. for all your supports and your prayer. You know, we couldn't do it without you. Mm -hmm. um, we appreciate it so much. Um, we just... Really, just be in prayer. But pray for our families here at home, too. They surround them with your love. Surround them with Jesus. Yes. Um, they're a mission, too. Yeah. And this church is put here to do mission. If that's out there, down the street, and the person next to you, or across the world. You know, I'm still praying and opening up to that someday I... I have it in my heart, I want to go to the unreached, to where Jesus has never been heard, and that's going to take preparation, and we can only be prepared by that by a church. It is the church 
that will build us up and enable that. Um, I've been invited to go to Madagascar to reach unreached people. Our friend Sarah, we were traveling with, and she said, um, what would you think down the future of going to the highlands of Vietnam to reach an unreached people? So, I mean, these are all things that are on our heart, but it's something that a community of faith has to surround us with to enable to do that, because then we're going into a whole new ball game. Then we're going into a place where our joy in Jesus has to be above everything because that may be all we, that will be all we'll have. And I also have a great heart for the Muslims that I pray constantly that God may open that door. And so what it needs to be prepared to do that. Um, do I want to be a martyr? No. But I want to be faithful to what Jesus says. Jesus says, go to all nations. And there's two billion people in the world that have never heard of Jesus Christ. And so when we see that passage in where it's before the throne of God of every tribe, every nation, every language, we haven't reached that yet. And we haven't reached that yet because what is left is now very dangerous and very hard. But the Holy Spirit goes ahead. But to do things like that, anyone, whether it's us, whether anyone, needs to have a church that prepares them. That's where leadership is formed. Not so much in Bible colleges, not in secondary education systems, in the church. It is the church that raises up its ministers. And so we need to bond together and focus on what Pentecost means to us and what Pentecost will mean when we all stand before the throne of heaven. So thank you so much for your prayers and, and this afternoon we will need them um, as we say goodbye to Velda's father and so just uh, keep us in your hearts please.